So I'm going to go through a couple case studies. And, um, and this is the first one, and this is where I was kind of kicking myself for not doing this much, much sooner. So this is Pine Ridge. So the, the thing with this property is it was originally a mobile home park, and then it was transitioned back to an RV, um, transitioned to an RV park. And there's still some mobile homes there. There's some cabins, but it was just a hodgepodge of RVs, mobile homes, cabins, and even a, actually a very, very nice single family home. Three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, very, very nice home, to appraised like 150. So we bought it with the intention of converting it back to 100% mobile homes. Why is that? Because I want stable long-term residents, right? And they have a higher sell rate. You can sell mobile home parks at a higher, uh, lower cap and a higher value than an RV park. So that was the intention. All intentions lead to great places, right? So uh, it didn't really work out that way. There's a septic issue, yada, yada, yada. We went back and forth, considered spending all this money, and we weren't guaranteed like we were going to be able to convert with the mobile home park into 100% mobile home park. And something really, it was just eye-opening to me, and it happened the first, kind of when we first purchased the property. And there's a lot of these RVs, there were people living there 5, 10 years. Did you guys know this existed? I, I didn't know. I knew about the nice RV park things, and it sort of really opened my attention. I'm like, these are pretty much small mobile homes. Small mobile homes. So the, here's some of the numbers. We bought this last year, August 2019. We bought it for 385. Uh, he was asking 415. He had an appraisal, uh, I believe, like 515 or 520, and we acquired this through a broker. And um, we went up there, and to be quite honest, the main, the main reason I was even, even able to negotiate it down was he didn't have a lot of buyers knocking down his door. And number two, I was just scared, you know. And so I, I, I countered. He accepted. I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to do this thing. And, and we went in. Um, let's see. You purchased it at 385 had that appraisal over 500 um, we've invested about $150,000 since we've acquired it in uh, CapEx, doing improvements, not a ton, but doing Im improvements, and that also includes buying homes. So this land, I'm sorry, this deal also came with 51 acres of raw land that uh, comes along with I-20. Why would he do that? I don't know. Like, honestly, I don't. Um, why, why didn't you cut that off? He just kind of wanted to be, deal, deal, be done with it. So we, we have, at, to this day, we've got in the, we're in the low 30 range of occupancy, 31, 32. Uh, as of two months, two months ago or last month, August, whatever, we have a, a BPO from a broker that we, when we go, go to list it at 1.1 million, we're going to get it up to 35 to 37 lots. I think we'll be, get a 1.25 valuation around to eight nine cap and that's when we're going to sell it not including the raw land we're going to hold on to that so these are some before and after pictures this kind of rehab stuff that we do versus you know got the 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 house remodels these are remodels we do for our parts so you typically find like the old rundown signage so we're replacing signage you've got old beat up mailboxes and i mean this thing was like pretty much like falling over and uh, this, was, this was one of my favorite things. So this was on the back of the mailbox when we bought the park, okay? So when you, you see that mailbox right there, it's got one of those, what are the, uh, the fiberglass boards where you post your bu the bulletin board with the fiberglass over it? All right, so we bought this, in, we bought this last year in August 2019. Our, our seller, he bought it in 2012. Okay, everybody with me? This was on the back of the mailbox when we bought it. Dated 2010. They never even changed the freaking, uh, you know, how, you, how you pay rent, who's the, the manager, never even touched it. I'm like, okay, here we go. So, you know, they had this little hodgepodge of signs versus, you know, the signage that we put on. The laundry room was, it was non-existent. There wasn't any laundry being done in this place. 
Um, it had a leak one time. They never fixed it. Like there was, you know, all the studs were exposed. So we did that kind of stuff. There were old, there were some old homes. We bought that particular home for $3,500. So someone was asking about the homes. Someone had lived there a really long time. Then they had a, a, a cousin or a nephew who came there and uh, he, he had to leave the property. And they was like, we're not going to move this thing. We just need to sell it. Said, what do you want? Give us $3,500. Done. So we paid them $3,500 for it. Uh, spent some money on it. Probably spent like ten grand. I, some people are saying, oh, you can spend like two or three grand on some of these houses. Maybe we've been spending ten to twenty thousand dollars on our mobile mobile home rehabs, to be honest with you. But we're making them a really nice product, right? If you got a crap product, you're going to kind of attract. It's that magnetism, right? Like if it's a trash house, you're going to kind of attract that people who has that standard. And so what we did is we fixed that up. We owner financed it to the couple from the cabin upgraded to the home for around twenty-three or $21,000, 10% interest. And uh, they're there now and they, they absolutely love it. And that was another thing I learned was uh, even though they're called mobile homes, manufactured homes, whatever you want to call them, 80% of them are never going to move after they're set, right? So for the most part, they're not going anywhere. So we've put some, that's, uh, that, that's the one cabin that I mentioned right at the front of the park and the other cabin that looks just absolutely tiny. It's pretty, it's very nice inside though. I will, I will say that. And we have this other uh, tiny home that we have now. So we've, uh, bought a tiny home, playing with that and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so one of the big things that we've done with this park now is going on a little over a year, like we've been really big on um, creating a sense of community. We, you know, we took six months, three to six months and just get, got out the bad folks, um, cleaned up the, the, the park and, you know, added some privacy fences around like trash cans and dumpsters and put the little doggy pooper things. And, um, and, we, and we found an incredible manager. Uh, late last year, a few years after, we told her what we were doing, what we are looking for. So she lives in the house up front. She pays, for, she pays market rent for that. And then we pay her a salary to manage the park. And she's just been amazing. Um, she's kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know the, the word for it, but she's a manager, but she's kind of like the, the mother of a lot of these people, right? And so she's doing uh, barbecues and they're, like, the kids are coming out and they're doing, playing horseshoe games. So it's really, we've created like a really, really good uh, sense of community there. And it, it's, I mean, it's been a really, really cool experience for us. And this one's on the verge of, like I said, go, uh, on the verge of selling. So here's some numbers. Um, this is one of my kind of slapped together spreadsheets when I started learning this stuff. I was used to single family. We didn't have fancy, you know, vernacular like NOI and all this kind of stuff. So I had to learn this last few years. But um, bought it for $385. we have since bought a couple of more RVs. So we've put $150,000. i am just kind of throwing that in the improvements. You know, what we've invested outside of our initial investment. Our, our sales price target, what I'd absolutely love, is if we're able to sell that at, at 1.5 uh, within the next 12 months. In it for a little over 5, 1.5, that's a pretty good spread for me. Um, we bought it. Uh, you see on the left was as is. Kind of You can see what our, our monthly income was, what our NOI was, and what we're working to, towards. So I think we'll hit in the next few months. Our, our rents are around 12000 a month, our income right now, but we're still putting a little bit into expenses, like into a CapEx here and there, and we're still buying some homes. But our, our, our rents, our income is around twelve grand, give or take. So when we, when we purchased the park, what scared me a little bit is like these RV parks and mobile home parks to a certain extent, you know, a lot of them, and depending on what towns they're in, like you've got these oil towns, be very cautious of buying, and, and buying a park in some of these boomer bus towns because they can be great when it's booming. When it's bust, there's nobody around. 
So I'm going up there to walk, walk the property just a week or so before we close. And the seller met me there. It's the only two times that we met. And he's up there and he's like, you're going to love me because the, the park's almost fully occupied. And the place was just packed because a big job came through, but it was a temporary job. So when we bought it, it was almost fully occupied. But then two or three months later, we were, we were about 50%, not 50%, about 60%, about 25% occupancy rate. So now, like I said, we're around 31 or 32. Our goal is to get to above 35, 37, and then that's when we're most likely going to list it for sale. So I want to share that because that was my first one. Now, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, okay? This is just kind of how I cut my, my teeth, and I'm pretty type A kind of guy, and I'll get in there and get my hands dirty. The next one I'm going to share with you is just a straight mobile home park. <laughs>